with the expansion of Copilot for Microsoft 365 availability to any size of business, knowledge workers around the world will start to be allocated access to this new tool. In some organizations, this will be part of a trial or fully managed rollout. That's certainly what Microsoft suggests. But in others, it will invariably be more ad hoc. No matter how many videos I make championing Copilot prep, there's a link to my most recent one in the video description. I know that at least some new users of Copilot for Microsoft 365 may be starting from zero when they first get the license. So in this video, I'm going to look at this from the perspective of someone starting out fresh with Copilot for Microsoft 365. What does it do? Why is it exciting? And what should you really know about it in order to get the best from this opportunity? So if you're a new user and you don't know where to start, or you're a supervisor struggling with how to explain this to your team, I hope by the end of this video, you'll know the answers to all of these questions and more. But first, a quick introduction. My name is Nick DeCourcy. I'm the owner of Bright Ideas Agency, a digital transformation consulting company focused on the needs of smaller businesses. I'm also the author of Who's in the Copilot Seat, a guide for small business leaders on adopting AI. I help businesses around the world get more from technology. And if you're interested in working with me or getting a copy of my book, there's more information and links in the video description. The foundational question we need to answer is what is Copilot for Microsoft 365? And given that I've been answering this question for nearly a year now, I found the best way to bring some contextual relevance to most people is to simply say, it's ChatGPT inside of Word and every other Office app. But really, it's much more than that. ChatGPT is essentially a chatbot that's based on an artificial intelligence technology called generative AI. ChatGPT uses its vast knowledge of written text consumed from all corners of the internet to generate an original response. Microsoft has its own version of ChatGPT called Copilot. And here you can see us asking Copilot for some tourist attractions to visit in New York City with a toddler. This demo, like all the demos you'll see in this video, is a simulation using demo accounts and data. Unlike using a search engine like Google, where you search for something and then you get back a bunch of websites that you then need to read through to get the right information, Copilot generates a contextually appropriate summary, giving you an overview of the information you need. But it also includes web links it's referencing in case you need to go there and read them over. When you create a prompt, the quality of the response will depend on you giving the right context. A tool like Copilot is great at creating text and sourcing information from the web for you, but if you don't tell it what you want clearly, it's not going to give you that great a response. Just the same as asking a human a question, really. In this case, we gave two important pieces of context with our request. We're going to a particular location, New York, and we need places that are appropriate for a particular age group, a toddler. Now, think about your day at work. There's a lot of things you do where there's a whole lot more context. You write a proposal and need to make sure you include contextual information from the right price list or the right brochure that shows off a particular product. A tool like Copilot could help you to do that but you'd have to go to SharePoint or Teams or somewhere else that you store files and find that price list or brochure and then copy and paste the right section. Copilot could do a pretty good job of putting this all together, but only if you provide the right contextual information. Copilot for Microsoft 365 takes that ChatGPT-like technology and connects it directly to your data, cutting out the work you had to do in finding the right context. So here in Word, I'm using Copilot for Microsoft 365, and I can tell it that I want a proposal drafted, but instead of having to find out sections of the supporting documents to copy and paste, I can just point Copilot to the right documents and it'll do the rest. And it's not just something you could use in Word. Here, I can do a similar process in PowerPoint. Imagine I want to create a presentation based on that proposal that we just created. You can quickly amplify the value of your existing content by using it elsewhere in Microsoft 365 with a little help from Copilot. Or maybe I'm in Outlook and I've received a long email from a client and it would be a help to me just to get a summary to work from. 
it can do that too. Copilot for Microsoft 365 exists across Outlook, Teams, Word, OneNote, Excel, PowerPoint, and Loop, as well as a standalone cross-platform service called Microsoft 365 Chat to help you generate and summarize content, get caught up on what you've missed, and analyze data. Before we move on to talk more about getting started with Copilot for Microsoft 365, if you're finding this video useful, it would be great if you'd give it a thumbs up to help it get in front of more interested people. And if you wanna see more like this, make sure you're subscribed too. If I were to dig into the capabilities of every one of those apps with Copilot, this would be an hour long video. And the reality is that everyone will use Copilot for Microsoft 365 in a slightly different way. That's kind of the point. It's a tool designed to co-pilot whatever you would be doing anyway. And everyone pilots their own work in a slightly different way. If you feel confident to just jump right in, you could just open your favorite app and find the co-pilot button. Microsoft has made it really easy to experiment with co-pilot and given a lot of help along the way. Anywhere you see Copilot in an app, there is help right there. But if you prefer a little less of a jump in with both feet approach, then I suggest you head over to adoption.microsoft.com, select Copilot, and then take a look at the Microsoft Copilot user help and learning link under the business user category. Here you can select an app you're interested in and find out more of what Copilot can do. Once you have some experience of using the tools, you might also be interested in Copilot Lab, which is kind of an online template gallery for prompts. You can get to this by using the More Prompts button in most of the Copilot panels, and from there, open the web link to Copilot Lab. Here, you can search prompts by product and save the ones you're interested in trying later. Prompting is the first of three general topics I want to talk about before wrapping up this video. Just as receiving clear instructions from your manager at work is important to you being successful, the value you get from Copilot will directly relate to the effort you spend in getting good at prompting it to do what you want. At the core of any prompt in Copilot for Microsoft 365, are four things. Your goal, or what you want to get done. I want a list of tourist attractions I should visit for my upcoming trip. Your context. I'm visiting New York City and traveling with a toddler. I want the attractions to be within 20 minutes travel of where I'm staying. You have a source. Use itinerary.docx for my accommodation details. And then, optionally, but often importantly, the expectations around what you're looking for. Give me a list of 10 options, present them in a table. Not all prompts will give you what you need right away, but the key is iterating until you find what works for what you want to do. You can watch 100 demos of Copilot for Microsoft 365 doing really cool things, but unless you can get it to do what you need, it's not gonna help you much. There are some technical limitations, things it just cannot do, but within the scope of its capabilities, what is between you and success is using the learning resources that are available and practice to get really good at managing your new Copilot. Next, I want to talk about how data works in Copilot for Microsoft 365. But first, I want to pause to tell you about one of the services I offer that might be of interest to you. There are lots of opportunities in the technology space to rethink what you're doing or focus on gaining new skills, but it's not always clear where to start. My one-on-one -on -one virtual coaching for digital transformation gives you the opportunity to work directly with me on whatever challenges you're having in the digital transformation, Microsoft 365 or AI space. I'll work with you to understand your problem and offer you a practical route forward where to get more information, training, or a solution to what you're running into. It's easy to book online and can be a catalyst to you getting more from your technology. There's a link in the description if you're interested in finding out more. The second big topic that I think all users of Copilot for Microsoft 365 can benefit from understanding better is exactly what's going on in the background with your data. For most organizations where Microsoft 365 is the main productivity tooling, you already have a lot of data inside its services. You have all your emails, your Teams chats, your documents, your calendar, maybe the transcripts of your recorded meetings. Maybe you even access an intranet in SharePoint. 
Microsoft 365 understands all this information using a technology called the Microsoft Graph. You could think of this as the database the Microsoft 365 tools like Search call upon when looking for something in your OneDrive, for instance. The special source of Copilot for Microsoft 365 isn't really its AI. As we've already explored, other AI tools can achieve much the same if you give them the same contextual information. But it's access into your data to be a super-powered context-building machine that lets you get to the right prompt far easier than using any other service is really what sets it apart. The way that Copilot accesses your data is in the user context. This means that anything you have access to in Microsoft 365, Copilot can see and use. But it doesn't give you any special access to anything you wouldn't otherwise get to see. The same is true for your colleagues. If you've shared a document with someone else, their co-pilot can see that, but their co-pilot doesn't get any special access to your emails or messages just because it's an AI. Everything is as safe and secure as it would be if you weren't using the co-pilot for Microsoft 365 tool. However, whereas most workers don't go digging around Microsoft 365 to turn up things they might have access to when looking for contextual information to help in their work, the same isn't necessarily true for Copilot. For this reason, as a Copilot user, you need to be conscious of where it might be pulling information from, and if you're the owner of resources like a team in Teams, where there might be data you wouldn't want people's Copilots pulling information from, it might be worthwhile checking the permissions of that resource. In a service like Microsoft 365 Chat, where it seeks out information on your behalf, it gives you links to the resource it's using. It is worthwhile checking these links out to make sure it's using the right information, particularly if the result you're getting isn't what you'd expect or doesn't seem quite right. And this leads us nicely onto our last topic, ensuring that you have full awareness that AI can be wrong. There are three big ways Copilot for Microsoft 365 can end up giving you the wrong answer, and you should be aware of each of these. First, related to the last topic, it could just end up drawing on the wrong source material. Its understanding of what might be relevant is surprisingly good, but it's also imperfect. There's probably a decent amount of understanding of your business that happens between you and your colleagues outside of Microsoft 365, so Copilot doesn't have full visibility into everything it might need to help you fully. It's important to remember that. If you have access to 10 different price lists across your OneDrive and SharePoint, and you instinctively know which one to reference because all the others are slightly wrong, don't assume that Copilot is going to have the same instinct. Second, Copilot can just misinterpret the information it does have access to. I see this most often in summarization, where perhaps you're looking for an email thread to be summarized. Sometimes it does great at this, but other times there is subtlety or complexity that's pertinent to fully understanding what's going on that Copilot simply doesn't understand that can lead to vagueness or just incorrect conclusions. Lastly, some of what Copilot does isn't based on your data at all. When an AI tool like Copilot is trained on vast amounts of written data, it learns some stuff. So if you prompt Copilot in Word to write an essay about the history of AI, for example, it will do so based on its trained knowledge. But the AI tool doesn't really know anything. The way it works is just to statistically understand language by making a prediction of what word should go next given the last. It's astounding how much it gets right with this being the foundation of its technology, but it can also be astounding how it gets stuff wrong. When it makes up incorrect responses, we call these hallucinations. For each of these reasons, human supervision is an essential part of using a tool like Copilot. A co-pilot may be able to do many tasks to fly a plane, but the person who is ultimately responsible for ensuring it gets to its destination safely is the pilot. This is exactly the same for the human that's using AI to help them in their work. The fact that AI can get stuff wrong shouldn't turn us off to the benefits this technology can offer. We comfortably work with others in the full knowledge that humans get stuff wrong all the time. Even in critical scenarios like flying a plane or visiting a doctor, but this human propensity for wrongness doesn't stop us from reaping the benefits of working with others. The same should be true for AI tools like Copilot. 
and we just need to get used to carrying out the right supervisory steps to ensure when they get stuff wrong, we catch it before it causes a problem. Think of Copilot for Microsoft 365 as a tool for a first draft or a quick catch up, not the tool that's going to finish the project or write that critical email from start to finish. Fit it into your workflow where it makes sense for you and maximize the potential it offers to make your workday less of a whirlwind so you can better focus your attention on the places you add most value and feel most engaged. I hope this quick overview has given you some insights in how best to get started with your new co-pilot. Let me know how it's going down in the comments. And until the next video, bye bye.